Hello again. I've gotten a request for a video on how to find the centroid of a parabola. And that seems like a pretty good thing to know, so here you go. I'll show you how to do that. Now, as a step to, going, uh, to getting there, what I'd like to do is start out by showing you how to find the centroid of a semicircle, only because that number is tabulated and it's easy to check to see if we got the right answer. So I'm going to show you the process for finding a centroid of a general shape using the centroid of a semicircle. And then once we're sure the process works, we'll go ahead and do the centroid of a parabola. Okay? So let's get cranking here. And I'll use my blue marker. All right, well, let's take a semicircle. Uh, the equation for a circle is x squared plus y squared equals some radius. I'll pick one. That's a circle whose center is at the, the intersection of the xy axis, x equals 0 and y equals 0, and whose radius equals 1. Now, I'm only interested in the part of the circle above the x-axis, and I'm going to see if I can draw that. That looks pretty close. So there's 1, minus 1, and that's also 1. Okay? All right, and that's the x and the y-axis. Okay? So what we're trying to do is find the centroid of this circle. It's symmetric left to right, so you know the centroid's going to be on the y-axis. And let's just draw some generic uh, point there. We'll figure out exactly where that is here in a minute. Okay, and I'm going to call that y bar. Uh, anytime you have a bar over a variable, that designates an, er or a, uh, an average. And centroid is kind of an average. It's like an average of areas. So we'll use y bar to, to uh, designate that. Now I'm going to need this to know what this curve is here, as a, uh, y as a function of x. So let me just do that real quick. y is the square root of 1 minus x squared. And if I were to look at the positive and negative square roots, I'd get a circle. But for right now, I'm only interested in the positive square root. Now, let's take a look at how we're going to do this. I'm eventually going to integrate. So what I'm eventually going to do is I'm going to start drawing boxes here. Okay. And I'm going to need to know where the centroid of that box is. So just so we, uh, we know what we're talking about here, the centroid of that box is y over 2. Okay? Its distance there is x. And the width of the box is dx. Now you've seen this all before. Let's see. Let's try that. I'm running out of room here, but let's... Okay, so there's dx is the width of the box. This is all just routine calculus, so hopefully you've seen this before. Now, the, de the definition of a centroid is a moment divided by an area, and a moment is just, in our case, a distance times an area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this shape up into a whole bunch of boxes. I'm going to find the distance of the center of the box from the x-axis and multiply that by the area of the box and then just add them all up. When we talk about adding up a whole bunch of boxes, that's integration. So that's where we're headed here. Okay, so let me write out the definition here. Okay. Now this is a moment over an area. Okay. I'm using these terms kind of loosely, but you'll see what I mean here in a second. Okay, so moment, I'm going to go from x1 to x2, where that's x1 and that's x2. I'm going to integrate from here to here. Okay, I have to have some end conditions. So the, the moment is going to be the distance from the x-axis to the centroid of each individual box. And that's going to be y over 2. So that's the, the, the distance. The area is going to be y times dx. Okay, y dx. All right. And down here, I want all the areas. So I'm going to add up all the y's times all the dx's. And you can see that's moment and that's area. That's just the area under the curve. Okay? That's all there is to this. Okay? So I can actually pull that one half out if I want. This is I'm writing down the exact same thing here. Okay, now, very important thing to notice here. That let me get on this side of the board. Okay, the integral of y squared divided by the integral of y 
is not the integral of y. You can't just divide one by the other. Okay, That doesn't work. You have to carry out this integration first and that integration. Then you can divide if you want to. All right. I'm a little low on board space here. So what I'm going to do is I'll write this out up here and I'll show you what the answer is. The, uh, let's see, this is going to be y bar equals one half integral from minus one to one of that squared, okay, which is one minus x squared dx and over the integral of minus one to one square root one minus x squared dx. And if you carry that out, you get uh, 0 0.424 what is it, four two four basically. Okay. If you look up in a table where the uh, vertical centroid of a, of a semicircle is, you find out at this point 212 times the diameter. Well, my diameter is 2, and that's twice 212. So we've got a, a method that works here. This method right here will work no matter what y is. Okay. So now that we know that, we can go ahead and do a parabola. So I'm going to erase this. I've got a parabola all made up. I'm going to use one particular parabola, but you can use any parabola. All right. And uh, we'll go ahead and find the centroid of that parabola. Okay, so let's say that uh, y equals, let's see what I write down here, uh, minus x squared plus 2x plus 5. And if you draw this out, okay, that's that's the, the y-axis where x equals 0. The center point of this thing is that x equals 1. And again, that looks horrible. It's, let me try this again. And it's tough to just freehand this stuff, you know it? Okay, that's, that's close enough. The, the, the center point of the parabola is at x equals 1. And it crosses the x-axis um, let's see, at, uh, what did I just say? Oh, got to find the roots of this too. I went ahead and used the quadratic equation. That root right there is minus one point, uh, let's see, uh, four, five, ba basically. It's actually four, four, nine, four something. I'm going to call it one point four, five, just to make things easy. And that's uh, one point four, five. Now, I've rounded off a little. If you actually use those for your integration limit, you're going to get a little bit off, but you'll get about the right answer. Okay, you can carry this out if you'd like. And let's see, that is that distance right there is uh, six. Okay, it doesn't really matter, but let's let put that there anyway. Now let's go through the exact same procedure. Okay, now I want to find the centroid of this area. Okay. I'm assuming that I only want the area above the x-axis, okay? And that the uh, parabola with a height of 6 goes from minus 1.45 to 1.45. Let's just do the exact same thing now. y bar equals now minus 1.45 to 1.45, 1 half, well here let's put the 1 half out front, okay? So I've got minus x squared plus 2x plus 5 squared dx, and then minus 1, try that again, 1.45 to 1.45 minus x squared plus 2x plus 5 dx. Okay, exact same thing. There's my moment. There's my area. I'm doing just the exact same thing. The only difference now is that I'm using a slightly different uh, function of y. All right. So if you want to work that out, you get, uh, let's see, y bar equals 2.4. Now let's see if that makes at least qualitative sense. It makes sense that the, the uh, centroid ought to be below uh, six or below half that height, below three, to 2.4 would be down there somewhere. Okay, that looks plausible. Now to double check, I also ran this in the x-axis using the exact same process, but now my centroid distance instead of being in y was in x, and I got x bar equals one. 
Well, that's the right answer. So that tells me I'm using the right method here. So there you go. This is how to figure out the centroid of a parabola.